I'm in a lot of pain because I'm a silly boy. This has single-handedly destroyed my lineage. Long story short, basically I was trying to cut something in work and this knife is not particularly sharp. So when I was trying to cut the box, it just wasn't doing the job. So I tried pulling it a bit harder. And after two seconds of doing that, apparently it became the sharpest blade known to man because I cut through the box like butter. And since I was pulling it very fucking hard, my hand then slipped and the very tip of this knife smacked me in my male spheres. And at the same time, I put punched myself in the groin. Look how pointy this fucking thing is. That hit me directly in the testy. So yeah, safe to say I'm in a lot of pain. <laughs> but genitals aside, we are talking about Shogun. Oh, I finished this show about, what, a week ago now, I'd say? And not a single day has gone by where I haven't thought about it. Because I genuinely think this is perfect. There is nothing wrong with this show. The historical accuracy they made sure they got down to a T, down to the point that they are speaking ancient Japanese. They're like an English speaker like myself, speaking Shakespearean English. It's completely fucking different. They taught all the women how to walk like the women did back then. It is genuinely the most effort I think I've ever seen put into a TV show other than Games of Thrones, or Games of Thrones? Jesus Christ, I sounded old there. I feel like the only thing that you could find wrong with this show is due to personal preference. By the way, there will be spoilers in this. If you haven't watched the show yet, trust me, go watch it. It's fantastic. There is not one objectively bad thing or decision or acting or anything in this fucking show. But yeah, I, I genuinely feel like the acting in this show was absolutely fucking phenomenal, man. And obviously it is mainly a Japanese cast because it's based in fucking feudal Japan. Which before we go any further, I just need to talk about this fucking headline. Are people this delusional nowadays, bro? But the performances were fucking spectacular, man. I'm gonna be cursing a lot because I am passionate. One of my favorite characters in the show is definitely John Blackthorn because he is basically the viewer. And I love what that kind of symbolizes. I know it's based off of like a real like historical event that actually happened. So like seeing his reactions to some of these like really extreme things that happen, like for example, like when he's being escorted for the first time by uh, the samurai and some guy just starts praying basically for John's safety and the samurai just cut his fucking head off in front of him. Like that is like the first taste of the samurai culture that we get and also John gets. And his reaction is basically just the same as us. It's like, what the fuck, you know? Like, it's a bit extreme. And that carries on throughout the entire show. And that's why I really like John Blackthorn as a character. Obviously, he's fucking hilarious. Mm, if it's not a warlock, he's most certainly a pimp. But I love seeing his progression because as he is easing into this culture a bit more and understanding the people a bit more, we are also getting to know these characters and getting to know this world and these traditions that they abide by and why they abide by them. But like, even just like the juxtaposition of uh, the star where John is being like in, gets put in front of a Yami sh I fucking hell man I don't even know I'm terrible with these names Yabushige that's the one Jesus but when he gets put in front of him for the first time we see how he actually views the Japanese people in that moment because he literally just got witnessed a guy get his head cut off for what he believes is nothing. He starts screaming at them, saying that they're godless savages, which is a huge juxtaposition where, like, when we see him go to meet his uh, crew again for the first time since he got there, and when he goes to actually see his crew, he sees that they haven't changed whatsoever. They are exactly the same as he was when he first got there. But him, as an individual and as a person, has changed significantly, and he just can't relate to his old crew anymore. And I really like that. It's like, it shows how much he has, not, e not even grown, but like how much of a different person he is by the end of it. And you even see it in his face after he kicks the shit out of his friend. <laughs> you see that he kind of doesn't know where he belongs. He doesn't know if he belongs with the Japanese people or if he belongs back where he came from. But his and Mariko's uh, relationship, I, I really fucking like that. But fuck me, man. Anna Sawai is now my new crush. Oh, she is just beautiful, my God. But like they had such a real type of relationship, you know, it felt like natural and like it, 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 the pacing was perfect also because she didn't just like overnight become like fascinated with this man, you know, she seen what he was doing with the cannon crew and the way he was and the way he acted and the way he treated those people as well. And you could just see that she had like an understanding of him as a person. And the more she started to understand them, the more she started to like him a lot more. This show made me audibly gasp and just make so many noises that other shows never make me make, you know what I mean? Like, usually I'm sitting there and I'm, like, thinking of all the things that I'm, like, wanting to say, you know? Or, like, I'm thinking, like, oh, no, I can't believe this happened. No, don't go in there. Don't do that, you know, type thing. But on this show, every single time something like that happened, I was very audible about it. I just couldn't hold it in. Like, I'm a lover of gore. It might sound a bit fucking psychotic, but, yeah, it is a little bit psychotic, I guess. But gore in movies and TV shows and stuff like that has always been great. I've always liked it. But I would be lying to you 
if I said that I did not squirm around in my chair like a little boy when I saw that fucking man being boiled alive. Like, holy fucking shit, what a way to die. All because Yabushige, the man himself, just wanted to write a poem about it. The worst thing about it, man, is the fact he was the only one that they killed. Like, imagine being that guy and, like, sitting up in whatever fucking heaven or whatever it is up there and being like, right, just waiting for my friends to join me and then they never do you would be pissed <laughs> but yeah there's just so many things i want to talk about with this show i don't even know where to fucking start the ending i really liked the ending i didn't like it at first don't get me wrong because i was really excited to see like the battle like i'm sure like everyone else was but at the at the same time it really shows how much of a mastermind toranaga really fucking was because throughout the show they just keep saying how he's known for his trickery. He's famous for his trickery. But not once did we ever see him like play a trick or whatever. But then at the end, it's revealed that this entire fucking thing has been a trick. And the way that I know that this is a fucking fact is because like when him and Yabushige are talking before he commits uh, seppuku. Or seppuku, Jesus Christ, man. I can't say that word properly. Seppuku, seppuku, seppuku. But when he's talking, he was basically explaining his plan to him. And he was like, oh, is this because you wanted to be Shogun this entire time in your secret heart? And then talking... Toranaga says that why would I tell a dead man my secrets? And as Yabushige cuts into his fucking abdomen, he looks up and smiles at Toranaga, who also smiles back before cutting his head off. And to an untrained eye, that might not seem like much. Untrained eye right here. But after watching a few videos, it really made it clear that he was smiling back as an answer before he cut uh, Yabushige's head off. He was just kind of giving him a nod, being like, yeah, you are right. This entire time I've been doing this to be Shogun. And I just like how subtle that really fucking was. It's just like, show don't tell. The epitome of show don't tell. And another thing I really fucking liked about this show is because mainly in samurai culture, it is like you are supposed to be the master of your emotions. And why I bring this up is because throughout the show, you see so many bad things happening and the samurai just remain as calm as they possibly can, especially like the higher ups, like uh, Toranaga himself. But like as like so many bad things happen, like death after death after death, you start to visibly see the uncomfortableness of these samurai in their eyes. And like I just feel like that was just such a perfect touch by the actors because for example Toranaga has always been like a stone cold fucking like killer you know type of eyes you know like he didn't really give you any sort of emotion indicating any other way never got really an indication that he liked you or he hated you it was always just stone cold but like when his right hand man I can't really remember his name I'm sorry but that scene was so tragic when Toranaga was basically uh, accepting the fee and his right hand man was saying like I can't let you go through with this and if you do go through with this I can't serve by you I can't do this for you and then he commits a uh, seppuku but while he is cutting his abdomen by the way fucking amazing uh effects in that fucking shot man jesus christ that was so realistic such a fucking emotional scene as well and like you see in Toranaga's eyes, you see the struggle that this man is going through to hide his emotions. His face is twitching everything. Every single samurai in that scene, you can see their face and you can see it in their eyes more than any other scene how fucking heartbreaking this is to them, especially Toranaga. If you pay attention, if you watch that scene back and pay attention to his eyes, you'll know what I mean. Oh no, I'm like, this is probably going to be one of the last things I talk about because it was the most devastating and I don't want to make this video too long. Mariko's whole adventure to Osaka. But then it gets to the point where she's about to commit uh, seppuku and the guy didn't turn up to be her second So John steps in I was on the edge of my fucking seat because out of every character on the show Mariko is my favorite for many fucking reasons But watching it I was like really fucking hoping that she wasn't gonna go through with it But at the same time when I saw John stand up to kind of like be her second I was like, oh, I think this is going to happen because it would have been like a great send-off You know, he was respecting her wishes. It would have been very romantic in a way because literally the scene before that he was begging her to live for him so like him like taking on that responsibility of being her second was weirdly romantic in a way you know even the way she looks at him because even the actress herself says that she believes that that is the moment that she fell in love with John because the way she looks at him bro is the way I wish my fucking woman would look at me if I had one of course but that's a topic for another day <laughs> so I thought she was done so I thought she was done for and then Ishii I yeah, the Ishido? Fuck me, man. What's his name? Oh, I did. I got it right. Ishido. Uh, Ishido. Ishido? Ishido. That's the one. That sounds about right. And But he shows up and gives her her permits to leave, which lifted a huge fucking weight off of my shoulder, man. Her and John had a very romantic night. It was like, oh, they are finally actually, like, together, together type of thing. And then they fucking killed her. You dicks. Had me on the edge of my seat. 
have me nearly have a panic attack. Only for you to make me feel that fucking sweet, sweet bliss of relief. Only to fucking decapitate me with my emotions. You dick. Lure me into a false sense of security and then just fucking, you know, blue ball me like that? You're a dickhead. Well, I wouldn't say blue ball me because they're fucking, they feel pretty blue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to like hurt a lot. Well, yeah, Shogun, fantastic show. Uh, actually, one sec, it feels kind of wrong. Here, one second. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's better. Fuck yeah. Look at the length of this thing, man. It's just as long as me. Well, I wouldn't say just as long if you catch my drift. <laughs> Fun fact, this very sword, like it's not a real katana. Like it, it is a real sword, but it's not like made traditionally. So it can't really be called a katana. But like, I used to always want to play with this as a kid because this is like, I can't remember who owns it. I don't know if it's my dad or my brother that owns this, but he had like a whole rack of samurai swords and stuff. And I used to always want to play with them as a kid. He always said that I'm not allowed to play with this one. Who's fucking laughing now? Haha, <laughs> I'm an adult now. You can't tell me no. And I also have a... Uh, this one here, which is more of like a kind of accurate katana. This one's blunt. Do I look like samurai? <laughs> this is one that I did get a hand a hold of as a child. And yeah, you can kind of see why they never let me play with their things. Well, let me know what you think of the show down below. And if you're Japanese, please let me know your thoughts down below as well, because I'm really interested to see like a Japanese person's thoughts on this. I love having conversations with you all down there. But yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Comment down below what you thought of the video. Comment down below what you want to see in the next video. But yeah, make sure to subscribe. We're on the road to 1000 subs by the end of 2024. If we do get hit there, I'm going to be going skydiving and jumping out of a fucking plane which i'm excited for but also terrified about because we've been growing like crazy guys like honestly i can't thank you all enough everyone who subscribed to me after my adhd video i put up yesterday thank you so much that video got so much more support than i expected it to i, I really didn't think a video of me talking about a mental disorder was really going to get so much attention but uh yeah thank you all for that but yeah we are really on track to hitting 1k by the end of this year but anyway ladies and gents it's been exo and i'll talk to you all later have a good one.